okay. The title of my message is To supply what is lacking in your faith. Key verses, verse 10. Let's read key verse together. It's Moses. It's Moses. Okay. Let's read this verse together. Please. Night and day, we must pray most honestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Night and day, we pray most honestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. In the last lesson, we could see the first affectionate heart, deep affection for Thessalonians. In his defense against false occasion, occasions. There is a thing out of sight, out of mind. But there is not the case of Paul. Despite people's occasions, they did not return because of lack of concern for them. He revealed his outstanding, affectionate heart. Depart in person, but not in thought. And Paul confessed that the believers in Thessalonica would be his joy, hope and joy, crown and glory when Jesus comes. We could think of what really matters in the end, in the view of Jesus coming again. It is the salvation of our own souls and the salvation of other souls through us. Chapters 1 through 3 in, Thessalon in First Thessalonians, these are long introduction of this book. And chapters 4 and 5 are main part. Main message is there. And long, in this long, introduction. You could get the message. And today's passage, chapter 3, is the last part of this introduction, including Paul sending Timothy to Thessalonica and his good report about their faith and love, and Paul's prayer for them. And you can see more, Paul's deep affection for them. Today's message has two parts. To strengthen you in your faith. To supply what is lacking in your faith. First, to strengthen you in your faith. Paul says in verse 1, So, when you could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left all by ourselves in Athens. Even as for Paul and his companions, there is a time for them to stand in no longer. In verse 5 too, For this reason, when I could, not, could stand it no longer, in such a time, he was not fatalistic or despairing. He did what he thought best. Probably not being sure of God's leading 100%. And then he says, we sent Timothy, our brother and God's fellow worker in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. Paul recognized Timothy as God's fellow worker. And then Timothy so could become Paul's gospel co-worker. Paul said to Corinthians, For this reason, I am sending to you Timothy. And the Philippians, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you. How good it is to have such a co-worker as Timothy. In the last, Sunday, last Monday testimony sharing meeting, Cain thought about 
the relationship between Paul and Timothy. That's a good thought. Timothy, such a precious gospel co-worker to Paul. Whenever there was a problem, we need to send Timothy, his best one. And then the purpose of sending Timothy was to strengthen and encourage them in their faith. Paul's deep concern was their faith. Paul knew that they would have many problems since they were left all by themselves, such as how to survive in their society, or how to be surviving tactics. However, as for Paul, their faith was his deepest concern. Faith is for faith is everything. In today's passage, though the faith is written five times, here, strengthen and encourage you in your faith, and then five, I sent Timothy, I sent to find out about your faith. And six, good news, he brought good news about your faith and love, and encouraged about you because of your faith, and to supply what is lacking in your faith. Faith is truly important in one's life. In the Gospel story, there is a father whose son was possessed by an evil spirit. The evil spirit, the evil spirit often threw the boy into the fire or water to kill him. What an agony he had having the son with an evil spirit. As the father, his pain and agony would be more than what could anyone could imagine. With his son, he came to Jesus and said, If you can help us, if you can help us and heal us, heal the boy, ask them. If you can, take pity on us and help us. But Jesus said, if you can, everything is possible for him who believes. Before healing the terribly sick son of the father, Jesus first wanted to help the father's faith. To Jesus, father's problem, the father's problem concerning faith was more serious than the son's problem of being controlled by evil spirit. So he said, if you can, everything is possible for him who believes. In this rebuke of Jesus, the father was not disheartened, but immediately exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. This was humble cry of the father before Jesus, the son of God. Jesus accepted this humble cry and healed the boy completely right away. The father must have learned the importance of faith in life. Taking Jesus' word in his heart, everything is possible for him who believes. There's more precious than the son's healing from demon possession. Everything is possible for him who believes. So as we start in the first one, he said, this is the victory that we have overcome. This is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. <clears throat> who is that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Then in this passage, Paul says, yes, to strengthen and encourage you in faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. You know quite well that we are destined for them. Christians are destined for trials and afflictions. All believers want to receive good things from God, not troubles and trials. The Thessalonians were young Christians, but Paul made clear that they were destined for trials. Paul said in 1 Philippians chapter 1, verse 29, 
It has been granted to you. On behalf of Christ, not only believe on him, but to suffer for him. Not only believe on him, but to suffer for him. That's God's calling for Christians. You should know that sufferings and trials are higher blessings of God. Because through those things, you can come closer to God, really learn true faith, deep faith. I see that God is really helping me to know this. Through trials and sufferings, I may come nearer to God. What a blessing. Learn true faith. And then here he says, in fact, when you are still with you, we kept telling you that we would be, we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way as well, no? It's somewhat surprising that from the beginning of their faith, Paul told them about persecution. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, and 12 says, Everyone who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. Everyone. The reason is what Jesus said. If you belong to the world, it should love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. And then here, Paul says, For this reason, I sent to find out about your faith. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. For I was afraid that the tempter might have tempted you, and our efforts might have been useless. Again, Paul says, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. Faith was his concern. Here we see that through trials and persecutions, in times of trials and temptations, the devil, tempter, can work powerfully to make God's people fail and fall through various kinds of strategies and temptations. Even Paul was afraid. There is tempter. That's why he's afraid. And Paul must have prayed a lot for them. Probably praying that Lord strengthen them in their faith, that they might stand at this time. Prayed a lot. Then indeed, Paul was found that they were standing in the Lord, standing firm in the Lord. We see that we can defeat the devil through our prayer and faith. Indeed, we can. Praying for ourselves, praying for others, defeats the devil, the tempter, we can overcome. At the Last Supper, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, so that your faith may not fail. When you turn back, strengthen your brothers. Indeed, through Jesus' prayer, Simon Peter turned back and strengthened his brothers. He became the pillar of the Jerusalem church. Then what happened was, Herod, another Herod, at the time of Jesus' birth, there was Herod, another Herod, next Herod, he killed James, Apostle James, brother of John, and then attempted to kill Peter also to end the gospel work. So Peter was kept in prison. But the church did not yield to the evil plan of Herod's government. They were praying honestly to God. What a description. Peter was kept in prison, but the church was honestly praying to God for him. The miracle happened. The angel of the Lord appeared. And light shone in the cell. And Chains fell up, Peter's risk, and the angel guided him to come out of the building, prison building, to the end. And God's work continued. And God did more. Herod died, 
the angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. What a miraculous work. Change was, situation was changed, ups and down. God is living. So Hannah said in her prayer, the Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. This is God. Daniel says, he changes time, changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. This is God. So there is some faith is the victory. It says, on every hand the foe we find. There will not be dread away. Let tents of ease be left behind and honor to pray. It continues. Let's sing this part. It's verse 3. Shall we go? On every hand the foe we find, thrown up in dread array. Let tents of ease be left behind and honored to the fray. Salvation's helmet on its head will choose all God about. The earth shall tremble, lease our tread and echo with our shout. Face is the victory, face is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Lord, you may see that face is the victory. Lord, strengthen us in our faith. Second, to supply what is lacking in your faith. Now Verses in verse 6. But Timothy said just now, Come to us from you. He has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Here we see that Paul wrote this epistle right after receiving good report from Timothy. And Paul, Timothy brought good news about their faith and love. Their faith was sound and strong. Their love was true. Their faith and love were proved. Faith and love, these two things, John Calvin said, these two words are the sum of godliness. So they were godly, also loyal, with pleasant memories of gospel servants, longing to see those who serve them in God. And then Paul says, therefore, we are encouraged about you, encouraged about you because of your faith. In all our distress and persecutions, we are encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live because you are standing firm in the Lord. How can you thank God enough for you in response to all the joy you have in the plans of our God? because of your faith. What an expression of encouragement and joy and thanks. The Syrian churches were young Christians, but they have become a great encouragement to Paul. And Paul thanked God. They were standing firm in the Lord. What a precious faith is. Standing firm in the Lord. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Be on your guard. Stand firm in your faith. And Jesus said, he talked about the signs of the end of the age. By standing, he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And Mark says also, he who stands firm to the end will be saved. By standing firm, you will gain life. In trials and tribulations, those stand firm will be saved. Preciousness of faith. Again, in the Gospel story, there is a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Kind of a hemorrhage she had. She went through many doctors, spending a lot of money. But instead of getting better, she got worse. What a pitiful life it is for 12 years. Then she heard about Jesus, and faith was produced in her. 
Faith was produced in her. Strengthening her weak arms and feeble knees, she stood and got out of the house and mingled with the crowd who were following Jesus. Then she came in front of the crowd, touched the edge of the cloak of Jesus behind him, because he thought that if I just touched the cloak, I would be healed. As an act of faith, immediately her bleeding stopped. She felt in her body that blood was stopped. She was freed from bleeding. So with that feeling, she wanted just to leave. She did not want anyone to know that she came in the public to Jesus. And she wanted to expose her past shameful life. Just want to live with physical healing only. only. But Jesus wanted her to be healed both physically and spiritually. And called her and confessed all the stories. Told, her, told her all the whole story. Then Jesus said, Doro, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Be freed from your suffering. But her faith said, just like I touched the Jesus cloak, I would be healed. And Jesus strengthened her inner faith, complete faith. Another time, this time there was a woman, Gentile woman, Syrophoenician woman. She had a demon possessed daughter. Can you imagine? All the mothers here want to, their daughters to be beautiful, grow beautiful and safe. But she had a demon possessed daughter. Screaming at night, restlessness, all kinds of abnormal behaviors, cutting herself. She must not have any joy of living. Demon possessed daughter. Then she heard about Jesus. Jesus was in a remote place in seclusion with the disciples only. But she heard about Jesus, went there and asked Jesus, begged Jesus to come and drive demons out of her daughter. What a precious face she had. But she was rejected. Jesus said, Let the children eat all they want. It's not right to take the children's bread to the dogs. Toss it to their dogs. Jesus regarded her as dogs, like all other Jews. She was terribly rejected. Unexpected, aggressive rejection she received. In this situation, she humbly recognized her as the daughter. Humble recognition. Yes, I'm Doro. Then her face was began to shine with shining wisdom. But Lord, even the dogs on the table eat the children's crumbs. crumbs. She wanted to have crumbs of Jesus' grace. Then Jesus said, The such a reply, you may go. The, the demon has left your daughter. In that gospel, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Jesus admired her faith. Terrible rejection. After that, amazing blessing, greater blessing came. She went home and found the daughter lying on the bed and the demon gone. Really, faith mirrors. Just want just to have that kind of faith. Human conditions cannot be mirrored before this Jesus, Son of God. That kind of faith just wants us to have. And Bible said about the Thessalonian church, their faith. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, And now, brothers, we want to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, the overflowing joy, and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability. All entirely on their own, they urgently pleased with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. And they did not do as we expected. They excelled our expectation. But they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then to us in keeping with the, the, this privilege. So, in the extreme poverty, they made rich, generous, beautiful offering to God because of their faith. Their faith was great, but now Paul says, 
night and day. We pray most honestly that we may see you see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. May our God and Father Himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. May it strengthen your hearts so that you may be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. This is Paul's prayer for the Thessalonians as the conclusion of this introduction using optative sentences that expresses wish. Paul's prayer for Thessalonians that they may grow in faith, love, and hope. In chapter 1, Paul commanded for their work of faith, labor of love, endurance of hope in Jesus Christ. Now he prays for them to grow for spiritual maturity, grow in faith, love, and hope. The supply or selecting in your faith. The supply is, in our translations, perfect, complete. Paul wants them to be perfect and complete. And he said in Colossians chapter 1, We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. Wow. Everyone perfect in Christ. And 2 Corinthians, Our prayer is for your perfection. Aim for perfection. What a goal in serving God's worship. I know that here are some people who have a uh, perfectionist. It's good. God wants us to be perfect in believing in Him. And that's uh, Paul's uh, aim and goal in serving God's fellowship. Here, verse 3, supply or selecting in your faith. Mm -hmm. Supply or selecting in your faith. Paul wants them to grow in faith to completion. How? How? is keeping the right attitude toward the word of God. When they heard the gospel, they accepted it not as the word of man, but as it actually is the word of God. There is work and work in them who believe. Keeping that attitude is keeping the word of God as the word of God. He wants them to grow in faith. This is in accordance with what Peter said, in 1 Peter chapter 2, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. Today, by it, you may grow up in your salvation. So Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, and correcting and training righteousness. So that the man of God be kept for every good work. In that way, he wants Thessalonians to grow in faith to the completion. And pray, pray for the, their love. Their love may increase. God may make their love increase and overflow more and more. And there is a, in the Bible order of love. Loving God and loving brothers and sisters in Christ and loving the people of the world for the celebration, purpose, evangelization of their souls, saving of those souls. They are doing well, keeping God's command, but He wants them to do more and more. And in loving, we need this. Paul prayed for them in Philippians. This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge, Depth of, and depth of insight. So it may be discerned, be able to discern what is best, may pure and blameless until the day of Christ. Love is knowledge and depth of insight and discernment and purity on top of sacrificial serving. And so that may He strengthen your hearts. We know the importance of our hearts. Proverbs 4.23 says, 
above all else, guard your heart, which is the wellspring of life. Heart is the seat of our motive, purpose, desire, and well, heart is the seat. The heart can be broken, damaged, deadened, or calloused. How art our heart can be strengthened? How? As Paul prays, he may strengthen your heart. But it's notable that he prayed for this after praying for faith and love. Faith in Jesus Christ and the love of God. Apart from love and faith, our hearts cannot be truly strengthened. When our hearts are truly strengthened, we can be strong and stable and unmovable amid the temptations. Hearts be strengthened. Be blameless and holy before God. How can we be blameless and holy? It is when our hearts are strengthened in faith and love. When we keep our faith in Jesus Christ, love God, others more and more, we become more and more unselfish and blameless. And when we are full of self, sinful self, we receive blames, vulnerable to blames and unholy. And when the Lord Jesus comes to all his uh, holy ones, he planted the hope of Jesus coming again. In chapter 1, he said, Wait for his son from heaven, who rescued us from the coming wrath. And then, what can be our hope and joy, crown and glory, when Jesus comes again here? Blameless and holy when he comes. Surely he will come. He plants this hope at each chapter. Thank God for this study. May God help us to be men and women of faith, love, and hope. Especially, may God strengthen us in faith. That we may grow in faith, so completion. And become his people of faith. To overcome our own problems. And be used by God in our time. Face this victory. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for helping us study this passage. When the students were left all by themselves, they had over so many problems. But first deepest concern was their faith. Saint Timothy to strengthen them in their faith. When he found out that they were standing firm in the Lord, he overjoyed, thanked God, and wanted to supply what is lacking in their faith, for the completion of their faith and love and hope. Father, we believe that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Here are your people. We cannot be forgotten by you. Remember us. That's our desire that our faith may become complete. Not only solve our own problems, but also overcome the world, conquer darkness of night, to spread the gospel, that your kingdom be powerfully advanced. Accept our Bible study and remember us. Raise your people here one by one as a person of faith in our time. Serve God's will upon us. Thank you for your words. I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen.